I'd be afraid of getting shot or, you know, getting damaged to the house. Now at 5, more reports of people being shot by paintball guns, this time in different neighborhoods. The message the prosecutor wants to send tonight. No matter how you slice it, it is warm right now, but wind temperatures will take a 20-degree tumble. Trying to find a parking spot downtown can be frustrating. Now people are having trouble paying for a spot because of a problem with a popular app. The issue that could put you at risk for getting a parking ticket. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Good evening and thanks for being here with us. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. First at 5, criminals firing paintball guns at people. It's a recent crime that seems to become a new trend, according to IMPD and the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. RTV6's Stephanie Wade spoke with people in two different neighborhoods where this happened last night and explains how police are now handling this. A man tells me he was just sitting on his porch last night around Linden and Orange Street in Fountain Square when someone drove by in a black sedan and started shooting paintballs at him and his home. One even grazed the side of his face. Just wish people had a little bit more sense about them and thought about their action, actions and the consequences they have for others. People who live here are not happy to hear that their neighbor was actually shot at with a paintball gun. The same is for those who live two miles down the road where a man says he was also hit twice by paintballs around the same time last night. Well, I think it's pretty bad and you gotta be careful and you gotta, you gotta watch out for them. The Marion County prosecutor tells me this type of crime was not on their radar until a few weeks ago. They recently charged a 27 year old man with battery using a deadly weapon for allegedly shooting a 60 year old man in the face with a paintball gun. These firearms are realistic looking. I mean, they look like AR-15s, they look like AK-47s. And so if they're pointing it at someone, uh, if that individual, whether it's a civilian or a police officer, uh, has uh, a firearm, you know, the, the kid carrying that, that paint gun could easily get shot themselves. Uh, no question whatsoever. By filing charges that carry a possible prison term up to six years, the prosecutor wants people to know they are taking this seriously and you will be charged to the full extent. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast. It's a warm one out there across central Indiana. As you can see there, the temperatures, temperatures close to 80 degrees, but big changes begin tonight. So Kevin, what is coming our way and what can we expect for Thursday morning? Let's live in the moment for a second. Let's do, <laughs> I've been enjoying right? it. It's been great to step <laughs> outside. 80 degrees, only the second time this year in Indianapolis we've hit 80. So uh, cooler temperatures are on the way. Eventually some thunderstorms mark the transition as well. That's what's on the way. But this evening you're in good shape. Nothing happening. As I mentioned, 80 in Indianapolis. It's been above that mark to the south. But look what happens by temperatures tumbling. This is what we mean. 59 degrees on Friday. Square in the middle of this Thursday. Tomorrow will be our transition day to the cooler temperatures. I show you the radar just to point out you've got plenty of time. Hopefully you hear the roar of the lawnmower in your neighborhood as people trying to catch up with what has been a very wet situation. 68 in Fort Wayne, 84 in Evansville. Temperatures dropped one degree in Indy to 79. Between now and 11, clouds will increase. Temperatures will only fall to the low 70s. Our thunderstorm chances increase by morning. I'll have that timeline for Thursday coming up. Parking in downtown Indianapolis can be a challenge at times. Many of you are having trouble paying for parking because of an issue with a popular app. And you could be at risk for a parking ticket too. Working for you, Call 6 Investigates Paris Lubell with what you have to know. Parking in Indianapolis can already be a struggle, but it's supposed to be easier if you use the Park Mobile app when you're paying for parking, but sometimes when you enter that number, it doesn't work. They're everywhere across the city, and after you find a spot in Indianapolis, feeding the meter is the next step. You can use one of those meter pay boxes. You enter the spot number from that little sign next to the actual parking spot, insert your credit card, pick a time, and you're on your way. The city says you can also do it an easier way. You can use an app on your smartphone called Park Mobile, but we've uncovered that smartphone app doesn't always work. Take this for an example. Entering spot number 5020 brings up a list of cities, but Indianapolis isn't included. Trying to scan the QR code on the spot sign doesn't work either. In fact, scanning the QR code on any of the signs we tried always came up with an error. 
It's not the only issue the app has been having recently. We talked to two ladies that were trying to use the app this afternoon. It won't let us increase the amount of time other than 10 minutes, and we need much more than 10 minutes for our fun. Yeah. Is it a little frustrating that it's not working? <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. I can't even get it to do anything. I can't even get it to the point where you can pick a time or anything. So I've tried, and I just give up and do it the way we just did it. So why doesn't it work? Coming up at 6, we go to the city with your concerns and seeing what they're doing to fix it. For now, in Indianapolis, Paris LaBelle, RTV6. A deputy's job is now in question after an inmate escaped custody, carjacked a woman, and led police on a brief chase this morning. The Marion County Sheriff office says it had arrested Colin Triggs on warrants out of Boone County. Deputies were preparing to transfer him around 745 this morning when he was able to get free and run from the garage. Investigators say Triggs ran to the nearby heliport, carjacked a woman there and took off. Deputies used OnStar to track the stolen vehicle to an area near 34th Street and Denny Street. That's where they arrested Triggs. After this unfolded, the sheriff's office said one of its deputies could lose his job. We did have one of our deputies that didn't seem to be following our, our security protocol, which may have led to, to him being able to run up the ramp. And what I can tell you early on is from, from the sheriff himself is this deputy, uh, his job is in jeopardy at this point for, for not following proper procedure. The Marion County Sheriff's Office is identifying that deputy as Ernest Wesley, a 20-year veteran of the department. He has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. The two men accused of shooting two individuals Indiana judges outside of downtown White Castle are now due in court on Friday in Indianapolis. Police say 23-year-old Alfredo Vasquez and 41-year-old Brandon Kaiser are the alleged suspects in the overnight shooting. Court documents say the men were kicked out of a downtown bar before getting into a fight with judges Andrew Adams and Brad Jacobs in the White Castle parking lot last week. Vasquez told police that Kaiser was the one who pulled out a gun and shot the two men. And today we learned both Judge Jacobs and Adams continue to recover at Indianapolis hospitals. Their families are relieved that two suspects are in custody in this case. Later tonight, the Hamilton Southeastern School Board will vote on a new anti-discrimination policy designed to protect its most vulnerable. The proposed policy lists gender identity as a protected class, which is something the group HS Equal praises. Well, that group was formed after controversial comments last month from one board member who said being a member of the LGBTQ community was becoming, quote, cool and popular. If passed, an HSE school could discipline a student, teacher, or staff member for harassment or discrimination. That meeting begins at 7 p.m. And tonight, Hamilton Southeastern School says anonymous emails sent to several students were actually part of a senior prank. A school administrator says several high school students reported receiving anonymous messages to their Office 365 email account. The school district did not release the content of those emails, although they say none contain direct threats to a specific person or school building. The district says, quote, the person behind this incident has since been caught and will be punished according to the student handbook, end quote. A drug bust on the city's northeast side, all because police pulled a man over for running a stop sign. Indiana State Police say they found 14 grams of heroin, 5 grams of marijuana, and items used for dealing narcotics inside of a car they stopped near 38th Street and Breen Drive last night. We are not naming the man arrested because prosecutors have not officially charged him yet. Still ahead of 5.30 on RTV6, the average American throws out one pound of food a day. Imagine how many people we could all feed with just our leftovers. We show you the organization that's finding a way to use that food to feed those who need it. And up next here at 5 o'clock, a major step Walmart is taking and how it will affect smokers. And we wake up to showers and thunderstorms tomorrow morning. This is at 7 a.m. I'll finish the hourly forecast for Thursday and show you what you won't see anymore in the seven-day planner. Weather than anyone else. Welcome back to the News at 5 on RTV6. Walmart says it will raise the minimum age to buy tobacco products and e-cigarettes at its stores to 21. This comes as regulators are putting pressure on stores to cut tobacco sales and use among minors. Walmart will also stop selling fruit and dessert flavored e-cigarettes, which critics say can hook teenagers on vaping. The new rules will take effect nationwide in July. One person is dead after what police are calling a homicide on the east side. Around 9 this morning, Metro Police found a woman dead in an alley on North Linwood Avenue between New York and Washington Streets. The name of that victim has not been released. 
And this is the same part of Indy that's seen two other shootings over the past two weeks. Back on April 25th, a man was shot and wounded just about a block from where today's homicides victim was found. Then exactly one week ago, police found a man and woman shot inside this house on Linwood, just north of Washington. A third person had been pistol whipped near the home while a fourth person walked up to the scene with other injuries. Police found 12 bullet holes in the side of the house that day. Hiring Hoosiers is an RTV6 initiative to connect you to a new job or a better job. A global defense and security company will be opening its new advanced manufacturing production facility in Indiana, bringing in hundreds of new jobs. Saab made the announcement at Purdue University today. The company will create up to 300 new jobs in the state with hiring starting in the year 2020. Saab will build a plant to make training jets for fighter pilots. The plant will be at West Lafayette's Discovery Park District. Discovery Park has been pushed by Purdue President Mitch Daniels as a way to use Purdue's aerospace engineering research to create jobs. In a male-dominated industry, women are showing they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the racing world. And as we count down to this weekend's Grand Prix, in the 103rd running of the Indianapolis 500, our Erin Lish is sitting down with some of the best female racers and gets an inside look at their lives. As we inch closer and closer to those major races here in the month of May, we are talking about girl power on the track. If a man flies around IMS. She's an Indy Lights winner and wants to do the same in the Indy Car Series. After not making the cut last year for the Indy 500, she's back again for the challenge. And I am really looking forward to opening day and getting to turn my first laps this year on Indianapolis Motor Speedway. She follows in the footsteps of legends like Janet Guthrie, the first woman to run in the 500, and the youngest to compete, which was Sarah Fisher at only 19 years old. You know, being in, in the cockpit of a race car was my favorite part. When I got into the car and was able to take off, you know, that was my world. That was my environment. Man says to grow the number of women in racing, it starts with funding. By a lot of sponsors, women are still viewed as a risk. And this is partly due to the fact that there's still a portion of the fan base that struggles with us being out there on track. But she believes this can change. It's trying to help fund and provide opportunities to women on the ladder so that we can help raise the next generation of female racers. Since retiring, Fisher is seeing those young racers while she hops in a midget car and turns up the dirt. What's really neat for me is seeing a lot of the girls that are coming along in some of the feeder series. So, you know, having the um, opportunity to go race the Chili Bowl a couple times and seeing all the girls that are in midget racing on dirt and in go-karts and um, for me, that's what's really cool because that's where it all starts. Man hopes more girls grow a passion for racing and the love of being on the track. Be really determined and prepared to dig really deep. But don't let anybody else ever tell you not to chase after that dream. Erin Lish, RTV6. Thanks, Aaron and Sarah Fisher also started Speedway Indoor Karting, which will be back out at IMS so you can take some laps at the track in the days leading up to the Indianapolis 500. Exciting stuff there. Former Colts star Dwight Freeney will be officially inducted into the team's Ring of Honor on Sunday, November 10th. The team will host the Miami Dolphins at Lucas Oil Stadium that day. As a Colt, Freeney was a seven-time Pro Bowl selection, and he was a member of the 2006 Super Bowl winning team. Freeney would become the 16th honoree in the Ring of Honor, joining a former teammates, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Edgerin James, and Jeff Saturday. If you've ever stood behind several people waiting to check out in a store because it was the only lane open that you need to see this story, working for you, John Matteris looks into where all the cashiers are going so you don't waste your money. Have you been to a big box store lately? If you got the feeling they had fewer human cashiers, you might be correct. One woman says her local Walmart store had no live cashiers when she stopped in recently. A few days ago, Peggy Werner grabbed a few items at her local Walmart. And I started to check out and I had to go up and down the lanes looking for the light or anything and there wasn't anybody there. No open lanes, so she flagged down an employee. And I said, well, it, how am I supposed to check out? And she said, everybody has to check out and self-check. 
Peggy worried it was a new policy. But when we checked, we found two cashiers working. And a manager told us it was just a temporary staffing issue, not a major change. Still, you'll find many complaints on Yelp and Reddit about Walmart stores with just one open cashier. But Walmart is hardly the only store that's cutting back on cashiers these days. Target was one of the last major chains to incorporate self-scanning lanes, but now they're adding more and more. We checked the Target down the road and found three cashiers open, number five, seven, and nine. But Forbes magazine says fewer cashiers is a trend that is not slowing. Forbes says Walmart is experimenting with cashierless Sam's Club stores right now. And new Amazon Go convenience stores are fully automated with no cashiers at all. But Peggy says she sees older and disabled people not yet ready to embrace this change. Some little lady followed me and she said, um, you could just see the fear on her face. And I said, have you ever checked out this way before? And she said, no. While Peggy likes new technology, she hopes all stores keep at least one human checkout lane for a long time to come. As always, don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries for RTV6. A new study shows men are faring better than women when it comes to holding on to money. Georgette, Juletta, and Fred Lean are in their mid to late 20s. And a new study by Stash reveals men are more frugal than women, especially millennial women. So it's like they're trying to be in competition with other women. So of course they want to rock the latest outfit. You know, they want to rock the latest hairdo. They don't care how much money they spend on it. Income inequality could be a factor. Um, a lot of women are not making as much as men are. Yeah. And their expenses are already high. According to the study, millennial women are um, three times as likely as their male counterparts to have no retirement planned. They're more than twice as likely to have debt, be unable to save, take this piece of advice from those who have lived with debt and are trying to recover from it. You're thinking, okay, let me use the credit card for now and I'll pay it back later. But then there's, and then life happens. You can't afford it with cash. It's simple as do not put it on a credit card. Working for you, we turn to Nerd Wallet for tips to get your debt under control. Make the most out of every dollar. Spend your money on essentials and try to stay away from things you just want but don't need. Earn extra cash. You can find a side hustle or odd job that you like. You can that can help you earn a little more money and create spending rules and don't break them. If you find yourself falling behind on savings goals, cut out extras you don't need. When you can make extra payments, maybe pay on your credit card more than once in a month. This could improve your credit score. That takes some discipline. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier said than done, but mm -hmm. discipline is where it's at. Create spending rules and don't break them. That's right. what I create eating rules all the time. And, and I, I break, break them. Yes. I break them hourly. <laughs> <laughs> time for a snack. As you look at the radar, we're quiet and we'll stay that way tonight. There's a chance for severe weather tomorrow, but it is a low chance. The better chance will be along the Ohio River. Between us and Mother's Day weekend, this cold front, and it will generate the showers and thunderstorms tomorrow and deliver the much cooler air as we go Friday into the weekend. Temperature today just above 80 in spots. Tomorrow 70 is the mark and then you see what happens. Here's your average temperature will be below average. We're lowering the bar right on through the weekend and the trend will be even beyond the seven day forecast for below average temperatures. Best chance of rain looking ahead is tomorrow. We're dry Friday probably Saturday. I have 20 percent chance of rain there. Shouldn't be a big deal. A little better chance we'll have a few showers on Mother's Day. If mom gets flowers, you can set them outside and maybe they'll get water. Temperature 81 in Tipton right now. Notice just up the road, up 31, it's in the 70s in Peru. 88 in Bedford. They're running away with the temperature award today. Warmest in the area. Faith, hello. This is a picture of 14 years ago when she was adopted into the Snyder family. How about that? Sandy Snyder sent in the picture of a young Faith. 80 degrees this evening. Some dogs may even find it a little on the warm side, right? Let's have a little break for some water. Temperatures by 11 o'clock in the low 70s. And that's it. It will be a warm night tonight. As you look at the overnight situation, some showers and thunder showers come in first thing in the morning. Not expecting severe storms here. May have a downpour or two for the morning drive. Then as we go into the afternoon hours, I think we'll see more showers and thunderstorms developing. There are the consistent temperatures tomorrow in the 60s. We'll hit maybe 70 for the afternoon high. Again, the arcing area of severe weather threat from the Gulf Coast states all the way to about the Ohio River.
temperatures in Indy at 70 tomorrow. We take another big jump into the upper 50s. It's not really a jump, but we jump and then land lower as we head Friday into the weekend. Mother's Day, 40% chance for some showers and 63. We'll stay at or below average beyond the seven-day forecast for a while. The Mother's Day reminder always works. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget, it's coming up, and we will be right back. Keller and Keller, right now. The world has been waiting in that wait. It is over. Our first glimpse at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's little bundle of joy. The royal couple officially revealed his name, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. Archie slept through his first press conference. He also met his great grandma and great grandpa, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh, and he was awake for that meeting. Very exciting. Very cute. <laughs>